Hi, everybody. I have the pleasure to introduce you Antonio Terceiro, uh, Debian Ruby developer, with the talk, with, with the tutorial, functional testing of Debian packages. Hello, everyone. So we're here today about, to talk about testing. I'd like to get an idea of where you guys are coming from. Uh, raise your hand if you maintain a Debian package. Uh, if your package, now keep your hands up. <laughs> <laughs> if your package has auto package test support, drop your hand. <laughs> wow, then you are the right crowd for this talk. Uh, automated tests are great, and we need more of it. Uh, I hope I won't find anyone to disagree with that. Of course, it doesn't solve everything. So in lots of types of applications, you still need manual tests. But if you have a safety net with automated tests, you can uh, spend a lot of time uh, handling other things other than doing all manual testing. And then, uh, this is the topics, are the topics we are going to cover here. So I, I'll talk about a little bit about the history of this uh, effort to increase the testing coverage of Debian. Uh, we are going to discuss the specs for uh, declaring the tests that you want to have run for your package. We are going to discuss the tools you can use to test locally and to reproduce exactly the, the same setup as you have in the Debian continuous integration. And then I'll give uh, several examples of packages that have tests and that use uh, several techniques to test their features. So auto package test is actually not, was actually not invented yesterday. So it was uh, the first, very first upload was made in 2006. So it's going to be 10 years next year. And it took quite a while to get uh, some coverage in the archive. And then in 2012, there was a proposed DEP. What was, it was DEP H. So it described uh, automatic as installed package testing. So it's in that address, more or less. So there you have a pointer to the actual location of the spec, which today lives in the, in the auto package test which repository. And then the, the idea behind that, the DEP8 specification is to uh, describe a standard interface so that packages can declare their tests uh, in a way that can be tested against a real system. So the idea of auto package test and DEP8 is not to test not, it's not to do build, ti build time tests, it's to test the package as it's, it's installed. So uh, it is possible to run upstream test suites, but usually you want to test the actual package that is it, with its binaries in user slash bin, which, uh, which is library code if it's Python or Ruby or whatever, installed in, this, in the right place so you don't have to mess with uh, s uh, library load paths and all that kind of stuff, you, you want to test the actual thing that users are going to use. And then there was this, uh, this idea floating around that someone, somewhere, should run uh, auto package tests on the whole archive. And then in January 2014, so a year and a half uh, from now, uh, I decided to was a little earlier than that, but on January 2014, I had something working, which I, I called Debian Continuous Integration. It was a very ugly, the, the, the HTML HM, HM was very ugly, it was very, uh, very basic, but then uh, w one year and a half uh, later, we had two GSOC students last year, so one of them worked with me in the enhancing the UI and make it ready for having, for testing multiple suites and architectures. So today we have support for that. We don't do it yet, but uh, the UI is ready for doing it. And then also, uh, it got a lot of my hacking time. 
And then today we have uh, CI Debian Net, which is um, it's quite nice. It shows uh, there in the left the la latest results. I took this screenshot yesterday. And then you, you, you can subscribe to the feed, which is actually very quiet if you uh, take into consideration the number of packages in the archive. So a few entries a day because it only notifies you when a, a package changes state. So if it uses it, use it to pass and now fails, then you get an entry in the, in, in the feed. But if it's always failing or always, always, always passing, you don't get uh, noise saying that pass, 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 or fail, 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 fail. So it's quite nice to watch this feed to uh, get a sense of what's going on. So when, when I break something in Ruby, then I get lots of Ruby dash full failed and so on. And now we, we also have today uh, the same thing for Ubuntu. So there is this, uh, Ubuntu actually they run uh, AMD64 and i386 and then a few of their suites. Willy. Yes, yes, they, 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 they yeah, the, the question was, they really use this as a gateway to the archive. So yeah, they, they, they do use that data from there to drive their Britney uh, instance. And then this is the, the numbers of, number of packages that we have uh, being tested by, Deb, uh, by Debian CI. So in the very beginning it was 190, I think. So it was very, very small number, and today we are at 4,300 something. So you, you notice that we cheated a little bit there in, in May 2015 when we, uh, we actually whitelisted a bunch of Ruby and Perl packages, which have, all of them have a very similar structure and you can run the tests in them with uh, common code, so we, we, you don't have to, we don't have to update every single package, so we whitelisted a bunch of them, so we have a great spike there on packages tested, and you, you see that most of them passed their tests. So it, since, the, since the very beginning, there was a, a small percentage that uh, always failed, but uh, we increased a lot more uh, of, that, of uh, passing packages than failing ones, so it's nice. So if, if, if there's anyone here that works in a packaging team, for uh, programming language packages, and they probably can be also whitelisted to run uh, all the tests with a single command. I I would imagine that Python ones at least could you could have a a reasonable way of running tests on all of them. I have no idea about other languages. So we have today a coverage of uh, eighteen point five percent of the source packages in the archive, so the, the test suites are source, pa source package based, although they are supposed to test the installed binaries. Uh, and then we, we started with less than one percent in January, so we, there's reasonable uh, increase given the, the amount of effort that takes to, I mean, it's not so difficult as I hope to show you, gu you guys here, but uh, it's not trivial. And this is uh, how your package page will look like for a given architecture. So you have the whole history there of test runs with logs and everything. You have the artifacts with uh, more details about the, the environment where the test was run. And then the, the logs also have uh, lots of information. So CI data today is also available on the Debian Maintainer Dashboard page on uh, UDD. It's available on the DPO, so if you want to see the uh, CI status for your package, you can just go to the DPO page, and also the package trackers list the CI results. Uh, I'm pretty sure the new one does. I don't remember about the old one. So in, in the future, we, uh, we are almost ready to migrate to a distributed setup where we'll be able to put a lot of CPU power into running tests, so it will reduce the the lag between an upload to unstable and actually getting the, run, the test run. 
and uh, we also e this will also uh, enable us to test run for testing and maybe other architectures. So, so today we just run AMD sixty four. Now uh, talking about the specs again, dev.debian.net is your friend. Uh, there's a link there. So uh, there are two basic elements of uh, of the specification. One is in the source stanza of your Debian control file declaring that the package has a test suite. So you do that by adding a test suite field with uh, auto package test value. You can use other values. So the the Perl and Ruby package that I mentioned, they use auto package test dash pkg dash language. So that's what uh, helps us identify how exactly to run those tests. But uh, if you are uh, writing your tests specifically for your package, you want uh, this, uh, this header here. So use it to be xs dash test suite, but you don't need that today. You can just use test suite. Uh, the package in Jesse already supports that, so it should be good by now. And then you, you have a, an extra control file in Debian tests control in which you list your tests. So I, I, that's what the, head, the rest of the spec is about. So you, you, you can just declare tests. So in this case, you are declaring three, three tests, and each one has to be an executable inside Debian tests. So it's just like that. So it can be anything. You can, uh, you can build C binaries with those names if you want. You can, but the most common case is just writing shell scripts or uh, in, in another interpreted language. And then it has to be executable, and if executive is zero, the test passes, and if executive is non-zero, the test fails. And it's simple like that. You, if, you, if you have uh, a simple way of running your tests, you don't have to write a one-line shell script, so you can just declare it directly. So you use test command, and then whatever you want. Uh, then you, you can also have uh, extra fields, you can use depends. So in this case, that symbol means all the binaries of the source package. So when the test bed is prepared, all those binaries will be installed, plus the ones you declare. So in this case, I want, uh, I want to have all, all my binaries installed and also uh, some test tool I'm going to use to run tests. Uh, you can also have multiple tests with different uh, characteristics. So you just use multiple uh, stanzas in the control file. So in this case, I have uh, one test program that needs a given test tool, and then I have uh, some smoke test that doesn't need anything besides the binary. So if you don't say anything, the depends is assumed to be all the binaries. So the at depends uh, column at is the default. You don't, if you just need your binary, you don't need to say anything. You can also uh, need your build dependencies to run tests. So in this case, in the case where you want to run an upstream test switch, which uses X unit frameworks or something, you can just use that and use your, your build dependencies. And then you can specify restrictions on the tests. So it's uh, additional requirements. I'm gonna give a few examples here. You, you can say that this test breaks the test bed, uh, I don't know, something you do there in the test script uh, puts the system in, in, into a state that's not going to uh, work when you run a second test on that, on there. So, for instance, if, in this case, you, ha you only have one test, but you, if you have two and you have breaks test bed there, you, you would instantiate a new test bed for each test. Otherwise, you just reuse the same one. <laughs> I was wondering if this means that the test bed has to break or that there's a big chance that the test bed uh, breaks. Uh, it means, it might mean both. So the point is, when this test is done, you don't need to reuse it. You don't want to reuse the test bed. And also, if you are running this test against your real system, you want, you want to skip it. So if you, if you run it in outside of a virtual machine or a container, 
the visualization driver will skip the test. So if you're running on your main system as root especially, then that's going to, uh, this test is going to be skipped. So you don't break your working machine. One more question on that topic. Um, how are those uh, machines reused? So is there a chance that there is clutter from some previous one in the one for another package later? No, no. So in, um, I will get there, but auto package test supports uh, virtualization backends. So you can choose if you want to run th that test in a KVM machine or in a LXC container or in a, in a SCH root session. So usually, unless, if you say three tests with the same dependencies, everything equal, they will all run the same test bed. But if, if, you, if you use different uh, stanzas, then each one will get its test bed. And if you declare breaks test bed, then it will reset after each test. So you always get a fresh environment. You, you can also say that your test needs root. So since the test scripts are just anything, y you, can e you can even test preceding. So you, you can uh, declare, declare a dependency line saying that to not install your binaries, and then you can call apt from the test to install those binaries, and you can proceed before and test that the preceding work works. So you, you can use test as root if you need. Uh, by default, this is a common uh, gotcha. You, if your test outputs anything on the standard error stream, then it's considered a failure. So if, if your test uh, sends anything to uh, file descriptor 2, you want to declare a low standard error, or you want to redirect standard error somewhere, somehow. Then uh, you, you can uh, specify which level of, of isolation you want from your host system. So if you declare isolation container, then only things as isolated as a container or more will be able to run those tests. So if you, if you want to mess with system services, like stopping services, restarting services, and stuff like that, you don't want that to run in a CH root because that's going to uh, cause problems. So you can use isolation container. You can also use isolation machine to say that I can this can only be run on a virtual machine or something even more isolated. Uh, so you want to do that like if you want to load kernel modules, if you want to, I mean, test things, usually things that are related to, to the kernel. You can also say that you need your recommends, which will not be installed by default, but you can say that you need it. Now talking about tools, the very simple tool that probably everyone has already installed is SADT, which is part of DevScripts. It will assume that it's being run from the root of the source package, and you just run the test there. So it has a few limitations, so if, if it finds any restriction that it doesn't uh, know yet, it will skip your tests. But it's, it's useful as a first step, so I, you, if you maintain packages, you already have it installed, you just uh, create the test definition and run SADT from your source package, and it works. And then you, you have the, uh, the full thing, which is ADT-run from auto package test. It's a little more complicated. So you, you, you first say the input options for ADT run. So you can run the test from the current directory. You can run from uh, DSC. You can, uh, you can run from changes file. You can pass additional binary devs. You can do lots of stuff. So it's uh, the main page is a useful read. And then you use yes three dashes, and then uh, the virtualization arguments, which says uh, which kind of uh, virtual environment are going to use to run those tests. So there, the you you can use. Uh, so the most common case, which is equ equivalent to what SADT does is dosh dot slash and the so run the test from the current source package and on the new uh, virtualization uh, driver so that's going to run on your real machine it's not going to be it's not going to run as root but 
P2 run on your real system. So, so in my opinion, this should be the default. So if you just say ADT run, it should should just do that. I reported a bug uh, briefly before flying here. And I hope we are going to sort that out. And then you have, uh, and you, you can have the more complicated use case. So you can run. This is how more or less how, how more or less how the BCI does things. So it uh, it uses a S SCH root, and then you you say the name of your SCH root doesn't have to be this. It can be anything you want. And then in this case, I'm passing a changes file, so it will both run. Uh, read the test definition from the source package there, and then it will use the binaries there to test. So if <laughs> if you want to test an upload before, uh, uh, build before actually doing the upload, you can just pass the changes file. It will uh, use your binaries from there uh, over the ones in the in the archive. You, you can also do the, use this, uh, do the same thing with LXC and QEMU and SSH. So the SSH driver. Uh, assumes that you have some mechanism to instantiate uh, virtual machines on the cloud or in some uh, somewhere that's going to be magically creating virtual machines for you, and then it will SSH into them and run the test there. So there are requests for pbuilder and Docker support. So if you care about those things, you can write help write the drivers for them. Now uh, let's look at some examples and cheap tips and tricks. So I will show some examples here. Uh, I forgot to open the terminal in advance, so let's. I think white backgrounds better to see, right? So this is Pinpoint, which is uh, the presentation program I'm using here. So it has a very simple test definition. Can anybody see that? Is that the font is big enough? OK. So it has a simple test script called smoke test, and it uses its own binaries, file, and SHUnit2. This is my first chip. SHUnit uh, is very useful, so it's a testing framework like you find any language, but for shell scripts, it's very useful. You can do uh, everything that you do with other tools. And then the actual script. Uh, what I use to overcome that uh, standard error restrictions is just, I always just redirect standard error to uh, standard output, and I don't need to care about uh, that restriction. So you have here the test functions like you would do in any other language. So pinpoint, since pinpoint is a graphical application, it's not very practical yet to actual test the actual to test the actual user interface. So I'm here. I'm testing the PDF output feature. So I just create a, a PDF and then test that it's a valid PDF. So here I'm testing the, the output of file dash dash my type dash dash brief on the PDF actually returns application slash PDF. So I'm sure that if they, they, this test passes, the PDF output function analogy is not completely broken. And here is the test below is just a, a test for a corner case. When you have an empty background definition, it's user to crash. And then uh, to use test unit, you just source it from the bottom of your script. So you create the functions which begin with test something, and then you just source SH unit at the end, and then it, it runs. So if you can run with SADT here, SADT hides the output from you, it just keeps that spinning thingy there, and just gives you the result. Or if you want to run with auto package test, it will give you the full output of everything. It does a few, a few checks in the beginning, so it's checking if that I have the dependencies. So since since I'm running the test on my uh, host machine, it will not be able to install uh, things because it's not being run as root. 
So it, it checks that the dependencies are actually available. So if, if you're running on the, in your local machine, you have to make sure that you actually have the binaries, the corresponding binaries installed, otherwise your tests are going to run ag against the binaries from the archive. So it's passed, everything is nice. So chip one, SH unit two, very nice if you want to write a uh, test with shell scripts. Now Rails, uh, chip two I already said, so just redirecting the standard error. And then there is so the test definition is also uh, very simple. Just a single script called new app. So uh, this script is going to create a new Rails application and do some uh, test some basic Rails functionality like uh, adding a new table, adding an, uh, in the corresponding model object, and then running the test on that to make sure that everything works. And in this case, I'm, I'm saying hello standard error, it needs recommends because by default Rails applications need, actually need the, uh, the default application that Rails generates, the template one, uh, actually needs the, the recommended package. And then the script, so the chip here is how you interface with auto package tests. So you, you ha always have an ADT TMP variable, which is a, uh, temporary directory that's private to that single test. So you can use that to, uh, to change directories into. For instance, if you want to make sure that you are running your test in an empty directory, or you can store things there and, and so on. So I just create a new application, uh, change directory into it, run some commands, and if everything passes, then I'm fine. So in this case, it it al uh, already helped me a lot with uh, Rails has a, has a huge uh, dependency chain. So if something in the middle breaks, it, this script already, it's very simple, just creating a very basic application and running the test already helped me uh, to detect problems with uh, the dependency chain. So uh, another thing I want to show you is this handling here. So if you check for the existent, existence of ADTTMP, you can know whether you are running inside the auto package test or not. So in this case, I if I don't have one already, I create one. So I can just uh, run this test script quickly from inside the source package and you uh, run everything for me and I don't need anything else. So f this is useful if you have, uh, I have 10 minutes, okay. It's useful if you have uh, several test scripts and you, run, you just run to, uh, want to run one of them. So if you handle these things, you can just uh, do it. Uh, Redmine is another package uh, that has an interesting setup. The control file is actually a little more complicated. Ah. So I test uh, all the cases for all the, uh, the supported uh, databases. So I have one test for, in this case I use test command because I use a single test script with arguments. So I, I, in, this, in, this first, in the first tensor there, I'm using SQLite 3 and I'm using Apache 2 uh, passenger as, uh, as the the web application connection, uh, how, how the, the web server is going to interact with the actual application. And then I have one for Postgres, one for MySQL, and then another one with SQLAT again, but using a different Apache integration module, so I can test all these cases. So uh, this means that uh, before I upload a red mine, I, I, need to, I need to wait a little bit for these things to run, so. Each one is going to install a, a full Redmine installation from scratch on a new uh, backend. And last time I, I looked, it took like seven minutes to run because it's everything from the beginning. Uh, I won't bother with the details of the script, but the point is that you can also uh, pass parameters so you can have the same script that does things uh, slightly different with different backends and so on. 
Uh, I, I need to show you the script because um, so you, you can restart services. This is so I, I hear I'm here uh, changing the Apache configuration and then just reloading Apache and, <coughs> and then checking that it. Rec uh, this test is very basic, but also helps a lot. It just gets the the address where Redmine is supposed to be, and you test that uh, the HTML returns something sensible. So if that was a 404, a 403, or something else, or a, a 500 error, then the test would fail. Uh, random Ruby package. So if you want to know how your uh, package that's handled by uh, common you will notice that uh, there is no control file here, but the source package declares auto package test package Ruby, so uh, the CI environment knows how to handle that. And how will it do it? It will do it using the output of auto depth H, which is a helper tool that the auto package test will use. It's the tool that you, we, you want to patch if you want to add support for new packages. So in a Ruby package, it will create automatically a, a control file for that and auto package that will consume that file and it will run the test like that. So it will just do its thing without having to explicitly declare, oh, it failed. <laughs> nice. I love live demos. All right, I'm running the test against the old binary. That's what happens when you have that. So, but I, I do run the test before uploading on a clean environment. <laughs> just just for you to know. Uh, so auto uh, H has support for four types of packages. So there is Ruby, Perl, Node.js, Node and kernel modules that use DKMS. So if you want to add uh, support for new packages, you can, you can just look for the commits that added these two because they are very simple. You just, uh, you don't have to touch anything that already exists, you just have to create two new files. One to detect whether the, the package is of that type and then another to create uh, the actual output for the control file. Uh, you, you, we can also run a uh, look at DebCI itself. In this case, uh, DebCI runs uh, its own build time test suite against the installed version. So just call this script here. It's just a little uh, It just makes sure that you are running against, uh, not against the build tree, build the, the source tree, because uh, lots of Ruby packages have that. So if you are running from inside the Ruby tree, it will modify the load uh, path, the library load path to load libraries from the source package instead of loading the ones from the system, which is what you want when you are building. Otherwise, it's going to run its unit test against the old version that you might have installed. But when you're using, uh, a Auto package that you don't want that. So in this case, I just uh, copy every test to a temporary directory, change there, and run the test from there. So uh, I'm sure that's not going to load the code in the source tree. Uh, this test takes a little bit, so I'm not going to run them. But then this is one way of running upstream test suites. When you, if you if that's possible at all. I know uh, lots of test suites, especially for stuff written in C and C++ actually require building the whole thing, so it, that might get complicated, but uh, at least for interpreted language is usually doable. Uh, I'm gonna skip this one and let's leave some time for questions. Uh, I'm also gonna 
<laughs> skip this one. This chip is very helpful. So if you want to inspect the environment after the test finishes, especially if you are running against a virtual machine or a container or a, a CH root, you can pass a dash dash shell, which will always run a shell after the test, or you can pass dash dash shell dash fail, which will only run a test if the test fail. A sh it will only run a shell if the test fails, so you can inspect uh, what's going on there. So uh, please uh, join the movement to increase even more the test coverage in Debian. So you can add tests to your package. You can, al you can add generic tests for your package engine to auto adapt H. It's very easy. You can uh, talk to me. I'm here until the end of DebConf. We can sit together and, and do it very quickly. And you can also uh, talk to me if you want to help improve and maintaining ci.debian.net. Uh, a few acknowledgements. So, Ian Jackson for creating auto package tests. Martin Pete currently maintaining it. it. He's doing a very good job with uh, several improvements and very responsive. Uh, Brandon Fairchild and Lucas Kanashiro were uh, the GSOC students from last year. So, Brandon did a lot of the UI work, and uh, Lucas did a lot of Sent, sent a lot of bug reports with patches for packages that have uh, broken tests mostly. That's it. <laughs> um, I think I remember seeing uh, just to check that you actually built the package before you run the test. Is that logical, needed, or why? So, if you are running in a, so suppose you are preparing a new upload and you want to run the test. So you want to run the test against the, the binaries you just built, right? So you either have to install them if you are running on your current host system or you, you need to pass the changes file, for instance, to get those installed into the ch root container or what have you. But What I mean is in the CI ah, of no, Debian. Right. No, we, we don't build the package. We, we test whatever is, the, is in the archive. So auto package test can use uh, the source package as input. So if actually, if you run, uh, if you do this, it will, just, it will actually download the the source package from the archive and run the test from there. So that's what we do in CI. We just we don't build packages, and uh, that that way is, is much faster. And you are uh, testing exactly what you are shipping to user. I wanted to know if the test suite field can have multiple values. I mean, there is this auto package test dash pkg Perl, and can we have that together with auto package test alone? For a custom test of of the functionality for them, I I'm not sure. I have to check. So what um, what uh, auto package test does if it if it doesn't find Debian test control, then it calls auto dep age. So if you do have Debian test control, you want to include what whatever auto dep age would generate for your package there as well. You can also disable using the auto tests. So if you, there's a parameter in the ADT run that you say, you can say, I, I don't want to. The resource there will be, I'm not sure yet, but uh, you can say, I don't want uh, this crap that auto that page generates. Have you ever tested uh, uh, DPKG uh, config scripts like config or uh, pre RM post inst or something like that? I didn't, but it's possible. So what happens is uh, if, you, if, you, if you use the default dependency, your package will, will be installed before your tests have a chance to run. So I if you want to do that, you can uh, uh, put like uh, depends the package, the package. So the dependency will be satisfied just from the beginning. And then from your tests, you can say, uh, I need to test to, to run as root. And then you can there uh, 
make uh, preceding or everything else and then call apt to install your package. And then this, this way you, you can have code before and after the installation and then you can test whatever you want. So is there any existing back practice to integrate uh, this automated testing uh, into an S-build environment? Sorry, say that again, the last part in the uh, into a what to environment? To integrate this into an S-build environment. Uh, in an S-build, you mean uh, automatically running that after S-build? For example, I'm just asking, of course it's somehow possible, but is there any existing bad practice or... Yeah, I'm not sure. Wha I'm what I do is that uh, I always run tests against the changes file I just built after I built or build, but I have a wrapper script that does that for me. Okay. So, I so I'm just asking because we are actually building on an existing S build environment and I'm just thinking, well, what's you, you the You mean one? reusing the CH root that S build just uses? Uh, Maybe could be an approach, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah. uh, I, I think there is a wish list bug against S build to call uh, auto package set after the build, but I'm not sure. Okay, so it's still an unresolved question, so to speak. Yeah, well, I, I, I would say it's doable. I think. Yes. Okay, I'm content. As far as the Thank patches you. out there, shouldn't be a problem. Is there a restriction available to have an X11 server actually uh, a real one uh, actually running um, outside of the test? Uh, and especially, um, can the CI machines provide um, this at least for for the tests that require it? Uh, I don't think so. I I, I know Ubuntu has uh, they do run tests on bare metal, so they do have uh, dedicated. Uh, Real harder to run like video drivers testing that kind of stuff, but I don't know exactly how that works. And uh, um, no, w what there there is, what's there in Deb CI is that you can uh, you can have tags associated with a test run, and then you can use tags to identify a backend where you want to run that. But that's we don't have a good solution. You, you can use uh, xvfb run, which no, creates a kind of a that fake that's x11 that's server. Sometimes not sufficient. Yeah, I know. Thank yeah, you. I don't have a solution for that yet. Um, is there a possibility to um, to run tests against well kernels or um, tools providing virtual machines within nested virtual machines. So let's say we run one, the, the, the auto test is run in a virtual machine and inside something is tested which runs or tests mm -hmm. virtual machines. Yeah, I don't, I don't see why not. As far as KVM and KVM, it's actually supported on the host you are running. I don't see why not. Is it possible to run these tests before uh, a package gets in the archive? Uh, that's a good question. It would be. It would be possible. I think what Ubuntu does it they have a proposed suite, and then only after a few checks it goes into the into the, into the suite that the the users that use the actual development version get. So it's possible. I mean, we have more questions. Okay, so thanks a lot, uh, Antonio. Thank you.